thanks for stopping by and thanks for watching. Uh, today what we're going to be talking about is trigger freeze. Uh, what is it? Uh, a couple of reasons that why we get it and what we can actually do to go about correcting it. So what is trigger freeze? I would define trigger freeze as nothing more as a disruption to the intended pattern of which of that of which you actually wanted to shoot. Um, when it comes to doing my own personal practice, um, a lot of the stuff that I try to incorporate, whether it's strong hand, weak hand, or I have a two-handed grip, is I try to incorporate a lot of rhythm and cadence into the trigger control that I have for any given uh, target that I'm trying to shoot at. Um, think to yourself, if you were at five yards and you had a three-inch circle, the amount of speed that you'd be able to put on that, that trigger to get the results you want, versus if you were at, say, ten yards and you had a C-zone sized piece of steel. We apply the correct amount of trigger speed to get the results that we want uh, depending on varying distances and the degree of difficulty of the shot. Um, what trigger freeze would really entail is if I wanted to come out of the holster and I wanted to fire five consecutive shots, one, two, three, four, five, what it would actually look like would be one, two, three, stutter, four, and five. Um, down there, I, there's a piece of steel down there about 20 yards or so. I'm gonna put on my eyes and ears real quick. What you guys will see, I'm just going to do a small example of what trigger freeze sounds like, and then I'll shoot it one time where my, my intentions were to shoot it, and then we'll talk about what causes it and a couple things that we can do to fix it up. So I'm going to shoot this, and I'll have a little freeze, maybe between three and four, or something like that. You guys will hear it. you guys heard that I wanted to come out and fire the five I wanted to do one two three four five and instead what I got was one two three four five so now let's just shoot the intended speed and I'll actually keep it as it was I what it was my intentions were before I came out of the holster Those were two examples right there. Um, one, there was the intentions that I had prior to me coming out of the holster, and I had some freeze, and then there was the intentions that I had, and I was able to run it cleanly. So let's talk about what causes this and what we couple things that we can do to try and fix it. So a couple causes of trigger control, albeit with all things uh, being equal, um, you could probably kind of sit on what side of the campfire you'd want to sit on and talk about what caused it for you, or even if something did not cause it to begin with. Um, I see two big reasons. Um, I'm guilty of one of them. Um, the second one kind of came after the fact, so I've kind of dealt with both of them throughout the entire time I've been shooting. Um, I went to the military. The first one is uh, uh, kind of just what I was taught, to be honest with you. Um, I went to the military in the coattails of 9-11. Um, I did 12 years, and about five years before I even decided to start ETSing, I, I went to my first civilian class outside the Army. Um, when I was in that class, the second I was asked to fire more than two rounds, I was stuttering like Rain Man, but for trigger control. And that's because the entire time, that eight years prior to that, before uh, I actually went to a civilian class, every time I was on a CQM range or CQB or SRM, depending on what they want to call it that day, um, everything was treated with control pairs. Uh, you come up, you fire two, uh, you're back down on a low ready, fire two, back down on a low ready. And when you do that thousands and thousands of reps, the second you want to fire three, the four, or the five, um, you're really going to kind of start stuttering. You're going to start firing in pairs of two. So if you wanted to fire four, what you would hear is one, two, three, four, five, six, and things would come out like that. So a big reason that that kind of caused it for me initially was simply because uh, doing things one way all the time without any kind of change to the status quo. So that was something I had to fix. Um, next big reason what kind of causes trigger control, um, and this one we're not going to dive too deep in the weeds with it. We're going to kind of skirt around it. Um, it's too much tension in the uh, actual grip itself. So what I'm going to do real quick, I'm going to kind of bring you guys down here. And we're going to do a really, really weird crotch shot. But you guys will kind of see the point I'm trying to illustrate here. So right now I'm taking a knee and just I kind of got my, well, I got my legs spread open a little bit. And if I take my hand and I clinch it as hard as I possibly can in that little spot right here I don't know if you guys can hear that but if I clench my hand as hard as I can and I put my hand right here where it kind of makes that drum effect and I try and tap my index finger um, let me see if I can back up a little bit here and I try and tap my index finger a little bit if you guys can kind of see the index finger has a tough time moving independently of the rest of the hand 
um, simply because all the muscles and tendons on our hand work in a sympathetic type response. They like to work in unison. So if I have a really, really crushing convulsive type grip, it's incredibly hard to get this index finger to work independently and quickly. So think crushing grip right now crush your grip really tight and then try and move this index finger independently it's actually pretty slow and pretty hard to move if you loosen that grip up just a little bit and we still have a really good hay gun type of grip a nice decent firm grip but it's not crushing grip you're able to move that trigger finger a little bit more independently a little bit more freely a little bit more quickly so a big thing aside from having bad habits that you'll see with uh, getting trigger freeze is nothing more than us having too much tension in the hand so let's talk about what we can actually do to fix it. Now, I'm sorry, I don't have a magic elixir. I don't have anything cool. Um, I don't have anything really profound to say on how to actually fix it, except we have to do the correct amount of work as it pertains to us. So what does that really mean? Uh, dry practice. Uh, a couple techniques that we can do for dry practice to try and correct it there to help us out in the live range. Dry practice is the use of your firearm in the comfort rate of your own home without the use of ammunition, safe environment, or you can continuously press that trigger over and over again without ever firing a shot. So this is a dry fire magazine. Uh, they have these for Glocks and M&Ps. The way this works is you simply put it in your magazine well, and this foot right here it rides on the vertical cam extension on your trigger bar. And what's neat about this, I got an empty gun and I'm pointing to safe direction here too. When, as soon as you insert that into your magazine, you get the or magazine well, excuse me, you get the full length of your trigger travel. So when I'm doing dry practice with this and I'm working on trying to not get a uh, any type of trigger freeze in here, <clears throat> I'll say my rhythm that I want out loud uh, maybe two, three times prior to the gun actually coming out. So well, let's say hypothetically I'm in the bedroom, there's a post-it note on the wall right there and I'm trying to get five shots on that post-it note in a good rhythm without having my sights leave that post-it note uh, big key to dry practice is being honest with yourself. So um, what I'll do is I'll just line up and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, and guns out and one, two, three, four, five. I seen my dot honest with my sights. Trigger felt good. Uh, everything felt in pretty good rhythm. So definitely one easy technique we can go about doing. Um, second thing we can do, um, uh, I'd say the dry fire magazine is definitely preferred but this will do as well uh, take a zip tie while holding your gun while all your guns locked open to the rear um, stick a zip tie down your barrel and then with your index finger just kind of uh, push that nub forward a little bit to kind of keep it secure and slowly ride your slide forward and push that nub uh, just to the right of your barrel hood so what you'll end up having is something that looks like this with your gun slightly out of battery as you can guys can kind of see right here what this does for us is with the gun out of battery we don't have the wall that we get from like uh, your traditional uh, polymer striker fired guns but we do have the full length of the trigger travel um, so all the way forward all the way to the rear when the shot would have broke so uh, one two three four and five we have the full length of travel, just as with that dry fire magazine. I want to come out of my holster and fire that one, two, three, four, five, six. Or if I'm trying to work on build drills uh, with a part time on a shot clock. So we'll just do six rounds one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the post a note on the wall, one, two, three, four, five, six. Being honest with myself, how that dot looks. And more importantly for me, as it pertains to what I'm trying to focus on, is that trigger freeze one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, next thing you can do to uh, work on that trigger freeze a little bit is take a, those business cards that find their way into your wallet for something that you probably don't want to buy. Um, business card works, uh, a little, uh, you can rip off the corner of a matchbook cover. You don't need a whole lot either. So just a little tiny uh, corner of a business card. Same principle as with that zip tie. <clears throat> Lock your gun open to the rear, kind of ride that slide forward a little bit and stick that business card or that piece of matchbook cover right to the right side of the uh the barrel hood just like this again pushes your gun out of battery and we still have the full length of trigger travel so we don't have to worry about that whole click run the slide reset click run the slide reset uh and whole nine so you're able to come out of your holster and one two three four five six or however many you want 15 if you want to do that and uh, a lot of what we can do to kind of correct the trigger freeze comes from dry practice. 
Um, I can honestly look anyone in the eye and tell you guys that I drive practice seven days a week. I'm not going to lie and say I do it for a long time because that's simply not the true uh, the truth. Um, part of my success for dry practice is I don't make it inconvenient for myself. I see a lot of dudes when I go to do dry practice, they gotta lock themselves in the garage, make the ambiance right, and have the candles going, and the kids are locked in the bedroom uh, playing PlayStation or whatever the case may be, and they have to lock the doors and put a blanket over their head. I don't really take it that serious, man. When I do dry practice, lock and clear the gun, put your ammunition away so you can't inadvertently stick it back in the magazine well and fire a live shot. So lock, clear the gun, put your ammo away, and just go get at it, have fun. Throw a post-it note in your wall. It doesn't need to be an actual thing. The more inconvenient you make it for yourself, the less likely you are to actually go into dry practice, where uh, conversely, the more convenient you make it for yourself, the more likely you're going to do it. And the more convenient I make it for myself, um, what I tend to find is I actually do it more than once a day. Um, I do it for maybe about 10, 15 minutes at a clip, and I'll probably do it uh, it, easily two times a day for about 15 minutes at a pop and uh, it's normally at the end of the day when I'm kind of winding down I might do once maybe around five o'clock or so and then again I'll probably pick it back up normally around eight o'clock ish or something like that so I make it really convenient for myself so um, hope you guys found the information in this video, video useful today and uh, that's it for me I'll see you guys next week